Hi there. So for this second part of the Corona 101 tutorial series, um, we're going to look at studio lighting uh, and outdoor lighting and the different ways we can do this. Um, so for this first little bit, I've got a scene set up. I'll show you real quick. Um, just the same scene as we had in the materials section. Um, just some basic teapots, but without the lights. So what we're going to do is have a look at the types of lights Corona uh, has to offer when lighting like a studio type environment. Um, obviously, you can use them for other things as well, but um, you would mainly use these in a situation like this. Now for the um, Corona Sun and HDR tutorials, we're going to look at a different scene. Um, with you know bigger scale uh, with a really simple house model in it just to make it work so before we create a light um, we're gonna have a quick look at what happens when we render without any lights in the scene so if I render now everything basically renders black because Corona doesn't have any information um, to render anything with and doesn't use the standard 3ds max light um, that is in your scene when you're working without any lights in your scene. Um, so if we have a real quick look at the render settings, something we can do to get, uh, so let's say when you're modeling or something like that and just want a, a really quick setup, is if you just hit Use Corona in the Scene Environment tab, its default is set up to white. Um, so if you render now, you'll actually get a completely white environment and you can see what, what the scene is about. Now, we're going to disable this again, um, but I thought I'd just show you real quick that you don't really need to make any lights. You can use that one really quickly to just kind of test a few things. Um, but let's get into the lights themselves. Now, where are you going to find your lights? Obviously, in the lights section, but we now have a Corona um, menu. So let's start by just creating a simple light and seeing what happens. So first off, we just have this light. I'm going to let it converge real quick and we can see we have viewport previews as you would have with uh, any other renderer really and we're going to have a quick look at the options. We only have one type of light when it comes to like studio lights. Why? Basically because we can set everything in the lights here. Um, so we don't really need, you know, again simplicity is the key here. They don't really want to give you 50 lights which are basically the same thing. They'd rather just give you one. Um, which works the same way every time, but you're able to modify it to the kind of light that you want. Um, so obviously, first thing we see is this is just a very basic spherical light. Um, before we go into all the crazy details, I'm going to render again real quick. And as you can see, we just have one light in the scene. So, canceling that. We can have a look at the settings now. So first of all, we can make it a targeted light quite easily just by um, selecting targeted in the menu. And I'm going to move this over real quick to be in the center. There we are. And that way, whatever we point the light, um, it'll actually be targeted that way. Standard behavior uh, compared to other lights in 3ds Max. Obviously with a spherical light, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So we'll see how that uh, affects the other types of lights uh, a lot clearer, obviously. Now for the intensity, obviously the more intense the light, um, the lighter your scene is going to be. Also notice the lines coming out of the light, they kind of represent the intensity of the light as well which is nice. Um, so you, you basically get a, uh, you know, a viewport preview of how bright the light is compared to others maybe. So let's just leave this maybe around 150. We can change that later. Um, then the way the light is calculated, the intensity is calculated, we can do in different, um, we can have different units. But I like to just leave it default. Uh, you can experiment with these. Obviously, if you know lights uh, or intensities of certain lights in these other units, then yeah, feel free to use them, obviously. I don't really have any use for them in this scene, so I'm going to leave them the way they are. Then for the color, um, we can either have the direct input and change the color itself on the fly. Use a color temperature, which will make the light either warmer or colder. 
And obviously we can use a texture map as well if we want to, um, which I'm not gonna do in this case. I mean, it speaks for itself. We'll keep the direct input for now, just leave it to white. Now the targeted light uh, is basically important when we're gonna change shape. So let's say we change this to rectangle. As you'll see now, the light target actually does make a difference in how the light is, um, in you know the direction the light is shining, obviously. Then again, the bigger you make the light, if we move on to the size, the more intense it is. Um, you can also tell it to emit on both sides. Now the directionality is another important one. Um, you could simulate maybe like a spotlight with this if you wanted to. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. And depending on what kind of shape you want, um, you could change this from maybe rectangle to disc to get more of a spotlight feel. Let's change this down a little bit. And you can mess with the directionality to get more or less of a spotlight. And the last option is a cylinder light, um, which you could use for a number of applications, obviously. We'll just stick with the disc light for now and just mess with the directionality a bit to get kind of a spotlight feel going. Now you can also have the light emit on both sides. Um, so basically it'll, it'll emit on the back as well. Now I don't have use for this in this scene, so I'm gonna turn this off as well. Um, standard it's off, so that's fine. And then here, um, we can turn on the wireframe of the light instead of the full white view. Um, and again, we can change the size of the lines coming out of the light. Um, so yeah, let's set up a real simple scene with just a few lights, uh, lighting this and see how it affects the scene and just look at how we can use these within a very simple studio setting. So we have our main light here, which is gonna be, you know, probably the brightest of them all. And I'm gonna add one, have this one may come up from the top a bit more, turn on directionality a bit, because we we can light the whole scene, that's not really too bad. Bring up the intensity maybe. And then we can just copy it. Bring this down, give it a minute to calculate. Bring this back maybe a little bit more. Bring the intensity down. Maybe we can have this light as more of a warm light. So let's see, maybe something like that. Keep it kind of subtle. Have this one just a little higher, maybe a little less. There we go. And then as a final light, we could make a new one. Turn off the wireframe so we can see what we're doing. Change the width, turn the directionality off, and then bring this back from the top and have it maybe like reflect a little bit of light as well. Now, the reason I'm putting this in front of the other light uh, is if we render now, except for the fact that it's gonna be completely and utterly over bright. I'll turn this one down maybe. There we go, just a little bit. Um, there's an important thing to note, which is not visible at the moment. So I'm gonna try and put this in here. For um, just testing reason, I'm gonna turn this down to zero and show you what's happening. We'll turn this, put this in front of the other light, kind of block the light a little bit. And if we render now, we should be able to see the effect. So what's going on? The light actually occludes um, the other light trying to shine past it. And if we wanted to turn this off, we can just turn off occluded other lights. And as we render now, you can see the light coming from the light behind it will still shine through. So this is nice when you're trying to make a really tight studio setup and you've got multiple lights overlapping and you're just trying to get the, you know, the right thing for your scene. It's a nice option to have in there as well. I just want to show you that real quick. Let's set this one to two, maybe have this one just neutral, lighting the back just a little bit. And if we render now, there we are. A very basic, simple scene. So that's that for studio lighting. Um, after this, we're gonna move on to a different scene and show how we can use the either built-in sun and sky system um, that Corona offers or how we can light with an HDR. 
So we'll now look at how to use the built-in sun and sky system in Corona. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Um, there's two ways of doing it. I'm going to show you one. Uh, the other one you can, if you look at the Corona documentation, is described as well of using a daylight system and then swapping out the regular sun for Corona sun. Um, but I'm going to do it just the first way because I find this to be quite easy to use. And um, yeah, let's get to it. So again, in the light section, uh, instead of Corona light, we're going to choose Corona sun this time. And let's just click it and build one. So before I render this, I'm going to show you real quick. I have a very, very basic scene uh, with a, just a random model. I think it's downloaded from Peter Guthrie's uh, blog at some point. Just to demonstrate what's going on here. Just a house model for scale. Um, and that way we at least get the right scale to use you know, for a scene like this. Or obviously we want to use uh, sun and sky. So with this sun selected, we can set the intensity and size of the sun um, quite quickly. But what's really nice is that we get an include exclude as well. So we can exclude certain things if we want or include or only include a few things. Um, but this second button here is what makes it really easy. This is why I prefer this method over the other. Um, basically, all you need to do is create the sun. And if we go and have a look at our environment map now, there's nothing in there. And if we click Add Corona Sky Environment, it will automatically throw in a skylight environment uh, Corona Sky Map. So this is just the material that's applied to everything. If we look at this, this is a basic skylight environment which is tuned to the sun settings as well. So this is all nice, um, yeah, basically nicely linked together. And you can use it straight out of the box. So with this setup, let's render real quick. And we can see what's going on. Um, first thing you'll notice is that it's way overexposed. Now this is normal because we're not using any exposure adjustment in our render. I was hoping to keep this until we got to the rendering part of um, this tutorial series. But when we look at the tools here, you can turn these on or off in your frame buffer. If we go to the third tab here, which is color map, we actually bring down the exposure um, to compensate for the crazy amount of light that we're getting from our Corona sun and sky. So if we bring this down, you can see we're getting a pretty realistic result. Um, this will actually render a fair bit faster than an HDRI I found. Um, but is obviously, even though it's realistic, uh, the model they're using is actually quite a recent one as far as I understand. So it does look quite good. Uh, obviously, if we hit cancel here, we can look at the other, um, the other settings. We can rotate the sun. So if we got it coming from the back, we can tell the render how high it is up in the sky. Um, and we can also mess with the color. Now I'm going to leave these standard because uh, in most situations you're just going to use the sun as is. So if we render again now having changed the position, there we go. We can mess with the exposure as well to get it right. Or to get the, the preview right in any case. And that's basically it for the Corona Sun and Sky system. So let's move on to the HDRI now. Um, this is actually very, very easy to use in Corona. Uh, you've got your standard render options. And if we open these, um, what we have to look at is in the scene environment, if there is a uh, environment map in the 3ds Max environment tab, then automatically Corona will use it and light the scene with it. So we don't need to add in extra lights um, telling Corona that we're using this now um, to light our scene. Basically, you just, all you have to do is throw it in there and yeah, that's it. So I'm going to load up a, an HDRI real quick. Let's go to bitmap. I should have one here. This is actually one that I downloaded from the Corona website. So when you purchase Corona, um, you actually get an HDR with it, or two HDRs with it, I'm sorry, uh, courtesy of Peter Guthrie. So load it up, there we are. And that's it. Give it a second to load up the HDR. Come on. So if we have a look at it now, all we have is just one environment map, and if I hit render, the scene will be automatically lit. Um, 
Again, we're going to have to mess with the exposure a little bit. Bring it down. And there we are. So, yeah, this last part was a little shorter than the others, but it's that easy. Now, if you want a little bit more control, um, you can download my HDR rig script, and there's a separate video for it, um, which gives you a lot of control uh, and really loads in the HDR quite easily and gives you a visual feedback as well in your viewport. So be sure to check that out as well. That's it for the lighting part. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I guess I'll see you again for the last part. And thanks for sticking with me as usual.